they were more up to play us. And, you know, we came out on our heels. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad that we uh, played with more physicality, played tougher. Um, and then we started hitting some shots, too. I mean, being down 16 or being up 16 in this league, you know, that's that can be cut down in two, three minutes. Um, so, you know, call the time out, regroup, talk about it, and go out there and just, uh, you know, make some plays. You know, you got to put a string of them together, four or five, you know, good possessions of offense and defense. Um, and then you just build momentum, and then you hit shots, you start feeling better about yourself, uh, and then you just go from there. He called two timeouts. Missoula called two timeouts in two minutes and 16 seconds. You said after Brooklyn that you surprised and you're shocked when he calls one. So when he calls two in two minutes, are you just like, okay, he must be it's something really wrong? Yeah, but I mean, I was there, you know, I could tell. Everybody, I mean, we all knew that we weren't, you know, we need to get our, our act together. Um, and, you know, essentially we did. Uh, no, but that's all right. You know, we disagree sometimes. Uh, but I think he's just trying to say that, you know, we've matured as a team um, over the course of the season, you know, which I agree with and we have. Um, you know, start playing with some more pace. We start getting some stops, getting out in transition. Um, and, you know, all I need to see is one go in. And then I just think the, the rest of them going in. Um, and, you know, just start playing with a rhythm and, you know, figure it out from there. Yeah, it's just, you know, that's like the next step, right? You know, uh, being able to figure out, you know, what their plan of attack is, how they're trying to stop you, you know, which guys are hedging, which guys are switching, which guys they want to maintain, you know, when they're going to blitz you, things like that. So they're always trying to stay a step ahead, um, just, you know, reading the game. Yeah, I was mad. That's why I got a tech. Uh, but I, I joked with D. White. I told him I got the tech for him. But, you know, I guess the, the incidental or no call, he got sent to the locker room. Uh, so I told him I got the tech for him. Uh, and then I told him I started getting buckets for him in the second half. So uh, that was that was all it was. Uh, it's, you know, that's why we got him. Um, and, you know, we always talk about sacrificing, you know, he's coming off the bench. Um, you know, that's what's best for the team, you know, on those given nights. And he accepts it, and he still comes in and, and, and be, you know, is himself. Um, and we need him to be. Um, and I think that's just what makes our team so special. You know, we got guys like that that are sacrificing. But, you know, we got guys out, and they step up even more and, uh, you know, have big nights like this. Final two questions. Uh, man, it's a it's an extreme honor. For one, you know, honoring his, his legacy and to do it being able to play basketball, right? You know, if you think back, uh, you know, the things that he stood for, you know, what he meant, you know, essentially gave somebody like myself an opportunity to live out my dream. Um, and, you know, people before me and, and you know, all the, the, the kids after me. Um, so we can't, you know, stress how thankful we are for him and his legacy and the things that, you know, he stood for while he was on this earth. Um, so, you know, being able to honor him and his family on MLK Day um, is, a, is a big privilege and honor, and I'm excited that we get to do that on Monday. Thank you.
Thank you.